Chapter 28 He woke up on a couch, in a bathroom. He looked around to get his bearings. He almost thought he was in another bizarre world, but then he remembered he was in the women's bathroom in the mall. It had a little couch in it, he'd discovered weeks ago, where he would sometimes take a nap after the energy pills wore off. He sat up, wiped the spit from the side of his mouth, and unlocked the door. He saw through the skylight that the sun had risen. He checked his phone and saw that it was ten minutes to eight. Jesus! He screamed as he ran to the dock door to his left. He wouldn't have been surprised to see Wally standing there, his paper under his arm and a stern look on his face. When he got to the door, he saw with relief that Wally was just parking his truck. Adam waited for him. Good morning, he said to Adam as he entered the mall. I got your message. I'll get somebody to board up that broken window. They went to the office so that Wally could put down his paper and lunchbox. You hungry? he asked Adam. A little, he said, just as he realized he was starving. He followed Wally out one of the side doors and down along the mall. Wally knocked on a seemingly random door, one of the doors Adam always checked when he did outside rounds, and an old man in dirty overalls opened it. Morning, Wally the man said. Adam was startled. He had never met this man before, but he appeared to be a maintenance man. How long ago did he get here? Did he arrive at the mall early every day? Adam suddenly felt self-conscious. It was one thing being surrounded by homeless people, supposedly, while he did his cardio circuits, but it was another to suddenly find out there was another person in the mall he didn't know about. This young man is Adam Young, Wally said to the man. He's been with us for over a month now. Adam, this is Bob, our maintenance man. Adam and Bob shook hands. How are you liking the job? Bob asked as he backed away to let them in. It's neat so far, Adam said as he looked around the room. The floor was oil-covered cement, and there were many steel shelves littered throughout. It looked like a garage or workshop and was incredibly cluttered. There was a little table set near the door, a plate of sausage patties and biscuits set in the center. Have a seat, Wally said. Bob makes breakfast sometimes. Help yourself. Don't expect this all the time, though, Bob said gruffly but not unkindly. Adam took a seat in a chair with cracked green leather cushions. He grabbed a paper plate and loaded it with food. He was very hungry, and the smell of the biscuits alone made his mouth water. He smeared on some butter and took a bite. He smiled as a flood of memories came to him. He hadn't eaten a biscuit in years, back when Dad used to make breakfast on Sunday mornings during Adam's summer visits with him. That good, huh? Wally asked as he sat across from him and loaded his own plate. Adam nodded as he chewed. He was pretty much undoing the cardio he'd done during his shift, but the food was good and it calmed his nerves. I saw the busted window on my way in, Bob said. I'll get on that. What happened? Not sure, Adam said. I found blood in that Sears. Blood? Bob said. How much? Was it a lot? A few drops. Why? Just wondering. I'm not cleaning that up. He and Wally laughed. Adam smiled, but only to fit in. Can I ask you guys a question? He said. Sure, Wally said. I heard there are homeless people in here. Is that true? Of course he knew there was at least one, but this was his way of bringing up Amelia. It's true, Bob said. It used to be a huge problem, but some come and go, and they don't bother anyone. It's a shame, Wally said. If these people ever went missing from the face of the earth, no one would even know it. The two older men nodded. I met one, Adam said. Her name's Amelia. Yeah, I know her, Bob said. She's a bit paranoid, but harmless. 
She claims there's a man in this mall killing people. Bob, who had been fiddling with something on a counter on the far side of the workroom, turned toward Adam. What makes her say that? Did she see anyone doing any murders? No, sir. Bob came back to the table and sat next to Adam. There's something important you should know about Amelia. She has schizophrenia. She constantly believes people are spying on her. It got so bad that her husband divorced her. I'll bet she told you her husband was dead, didn't she? Adam nodded. She thinks the mall murderer killed him. Bob scratched his stubble. I figured. He's alive and well, as far as I know. He just wants nothing to do with her. That's what she told me during one of her lucid days, anyway. I don't know any more about the man. We don't even know if Amelia is her real name, Wally chimed in. So, I should take everything she says with a grain of salt? Adam said. A grain? Bob laughed. Try a barrel.